We are on what used to be the beach of the old Fraser River, the ancient Fraser River. And so we have underneath here a whole series of layers of coarse material which was laid down under the Fraser. Later on, as the Fraser changed its course and the flooding event still happened, here we have a whole series of layers of uh, coarse sandy material which form the parent material from about here for the soil that developed on top. You'll notice that there's a change in the color here. It's dark for the A horizon. It becomes changed somewhat here. It's not changed enough to make a BF for a podsol, but it's changed enough to make a BM, which is the diagnostic horizon for a Brunosol, probably on its way to becoming a podsol given long enough time. And then below that, the sea horizons. The uh, rooting depth is quite deep because it is such a, a coarse textured soil, the roots don't have any trouble getting down into it. Of course, there would be a problem uh, in the soil drying out. So unlike the last soil that we saw where there were water table problems, in this case, there, there is probably going to be a moisture deficiency at, after some time. The absence of clays and silts in this Brunosol makes it somewhat infertile, lacking such nutrients as calcium, magnesium, and potassium. Some nitrogen is added by the flowering broom plants, which fix nitrogen, but overall this soil would need fertilizer applications for agricultural purposes. Brunosols are transitional between very young soils, lacking any kind of structure, and more developed soils, like the podzil. Soils of the Brunosolic order are usually characterized by the presence of a BM horizon, M signifying a slightly altered horizon. Great groups are determined by the pH of the B horizon and by the presence or absence of a thick, organic-rich AH horizon. In this profile, the pH is less than 5.5 and the thick AH horizon is absent, making it a district Brunosol.